Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. Yesterday's video seemed to spark a lot of comments, which was very interesting, but it brought another thought to my head. I was reading Jane's comment and um, she was talking about dresses that her mother would make and it brought to my mind the dresses that I wore when I was going to school. Now I was, I remember, I'll, you know, I'm going to go back to second grade, but I'll go back to kindergarten first. I'll kind of give you an idea of what my life was like when I was in school. What I, what I, my clock is donging and it's kind of distracting. It's done donging, okay. Um, when I was in school, we'll start with kindergarten. Kindergarten was, we had a jungle gym in our classroom, which today the state frowns upon because you're climbing something that is not anchored to the floor or anchored to the wall and it could fall over and somebody could get hurt so you can't have those in the classrooms anymore and we had teeter-totters and we had paste which kids were eating I never ate the paste but they used to eat the paste and our t the table that we worked on was actually the teeter-totter turned upside down so when we wanted to teeter-totter it was flipped over and we could teeter-totter on this. You're not allowed to have teeter-totters either because that's dangerous. So that was kindergarten and in kindergarten I was a very good little girl. Very good. I cried once though. I was, I used to take, a, we used to have to take naps. Kids don't take naps anymore. But I took a nap and I used to sleep between Ronnie and Doug. I know their last names but I won't say them. But anyways, I used to talk a lot. And I'd be talking to Ronnie, and then I'd be talking to Doug, and I was talking to Ronnie, and I talked to Doug, and I got caught. And when the teacher was on her lunch break, the high school students used to come in, the seniors used to come in and sit with us while we were um, taking our nap so the teacher could go for her lunch or her break. And when my teacher came back, I burst into tears. I had never cried in class before, but that was the first time I cried. And I fell asleep because I was so upset to think that I got caught and I had to stand up. Because when you get caught, they make you stand. Now the whole room knows that you were talking and the whole room knows that you've been, you're in trouble. And so when the teacher walked, walked in, she knew I was in trouble. And it upset me so bad because I was never one to get into trouble. In fact, I was the one that would always be um, nice. In fact, there was there was a, there was another thing that happened in kindergarten. Oh no, my nose is itching again. That means I'm telling stories. I'm telling tales, but I'm not. These are true tales. Um, <laughs> this is awful. But anyways, um, there was a little girl in our classroom, and her name was Jermaine. I don't remember her last name, and I shouldn't tell you tell you that anyways. But her name was Jermaine. And Jermaine was new to our school, and nobody would play to her, with her. All the kids would just kind of leave her alone because they had their little groups that they would play. Well, I would play with Jermaine, and I remember the one day the teacher said for me to, to um, try to let the other children play with her. Well, the teacher did not know that nobody was playing with her. I was the only one that would play with her. And so I sort of listened to the teacher. I hung back a little bit, but then I was back playing with Jermaine. And also in kindergarten, it was the first time I ever punched somebody. Yep, I punched a girl. Her name was Peggy. I can tell you her last name too, but I won't. But she was wrong, and it was the opposite of wrong. So that was her name. <laughs> It's like, I'll tell you their name, but I'm not going to mention any names, but their initial is, and then they say the name. That's what one of the teachers in our school used to do. Um, but anyways, she would pick me up. I was just a little tiny girl, and she was a real tall girl. And the kids used to like to pretend I was their baby. Well, I wasn't a baby. I was five and a half years old. And so she, I would tell her to put me down, put me down. And she'd say, no, I'm not going to put you down. And I'd say, put me down. And she goes, what are you going to do? So as soon as my feet hit the floor, my little fist went into her gut. As hard as this little fist could go. She buckled over, looked at me, and said, I'm going to tell on you. And I said, go right ahead. Well, she never did. She never told on me. But I never punched anybody ever again either. 
Okay, then in first grade, I got in trouble. I was tracing my name tag that was on my desk, and the teacher had told all the students to leave that name tag alone. And um, I wasn't picking at it. A lot of kids were picking at it, and they were peeling their name tags up. What it was is she would put our name on our desk, and that was to help us learn how to spell our names. Well, I was just tracing mine, and she caught me. So she told me to put my hands out. Now this is back when teachers actually used to hit your hands. She had a ruler and she spanked my hands with the ruler because I touched my label on my desk. That was first grade. Now second grade is where the dress comes in. Second grade, everybody was wearing, there was a lot of girls. It seemed like there was always more girls than boys, but all the girls wore dresses. And I used to think all the dresses that everybody wore was cute and pretty. And this one day I had on my favorite dress. It was my dress with the secret pockets. And I thought I was just the cat's meow. And when the teachers would go by or other classrooms would go by, they would. there was a little girl in my room and her name was Diana. And they'd say, oh, Diana, your dress is absolutely beautiful. Well, they used to say this all the time, but it never hit me that they were always complimenting Diana, except for this one day I had on my special dress and nobody said anything and um, I thought the other girls they have pretty dresses on too why isn't anybody ever telling them that their dresses are pretty well Diana had a mother that would make her dresses but she was a, a professional seamstress and you know all those dresses that were with the crinoline underneath and the real frilly looks and the silky materials and the real pretty pretty dresses the ones that you would wear to a a real big birthday party kind of thing or a very fancy to do. That's the kind of dresses that Diane used to wear. And the rest of us wore cotton dresses. But they were pretty dresses. And so that's what I remember in second grade. That That's when I realized that the world really doesn't treat everybody equal. And that's a sad thing to learn when you're in second grade. But that's when I learned that lesson that lesson of life. There was other lessons I've learned through the years, and um, but that was the one that I was working up to, was the third or the second grade dress story. Now, my own daughter, who liked to wear dresses all the time, when she got older, she, well, not even older, she was probably, I don't know, maybe second, third grade, she used to like to dress herself. She was a stylish girl. She was really stylish. She used to like to mix and match materials and mix and match patterns. And she would. She was really, she could have been a bohemian gypsy because she really, really used to wear strange things. She used to like her hair done strangely too. And I used to accommodate her. I used to do her hair the way she wanted it. And she would go to school wearing what she wanted to wear and then she'd come home complaining because the next day somebody would be doing the same thing she did and she couldn't understand how come they were copying her and I says well you know that's, that's really a compliment for them to copy you and I remember my mother being here one time when my daughter came home from school and she said to me you let her go to school like that and I go yeah I did I wasn't going to change her personal um, likes for whatever she was wearing. I really thought she was going to go into fashion because when we would go into the store, she didn't want to go through the toys. She liked going through the clothes and every time we would wheel through or walk through, depend, even when she was very young in the stroller, she'd have me stop so she could feel the material between her fingers and then she'd say whether she liked that material or disliked that material and then we'd move on. And this is why I thought she was going to go into fashion, but she didn't. She ended up becoming a hairdresser who is a very fashionable dresser. She can wear things that others would look at and say, oh my goodness, that's crazy. But she really looks good in the, in the stuff that she chooses. So that's it for today. I hope you had a great day. And I will talk to you all again tomorrow. So bye-bye.